If you watched my, my last CDC Rusty Spinner video, you saw me make a, like a thin body Rusty Spinner by pulling the stems through and not tying them in into the uh, into the body. Well, if you don't care too much about the 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 the, um, the thin body, then I got a I got a I got a different method for you that I think that is probably going to change the way you do CDC wings like this, like a split wing, or even like an upright wing too. This um, if you can, you're not gonna believe this, but this right here is only done with two feathers. Now they're they're the large feathers. They're not, but they're not the extra select Mark Pettijohn or uh, Trout Hunter or anything like that. They're not super extra select. I bought a box of Orvis CDC feathers like six years ago, and I split them all up into small, medium, and large. These just happens to be the large ones, uh, and it only took two to make these two wings right here. So essentially, one feather per wing, and. Uh, it seems crazy, but I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So let's get started. Thanks. This hook I'm using, size 14, all-purpose dry. Uh, you can tie these down real, real, real small, 16s too. Um, this happens to be a 14 1x. You could do a 16 standard, but this hook right here, the Sprite, all-purpose. This thing is the best fly fishing hook, like actual fishing hook, not just tying. But I'm talking. You're gonna fish them for the money. It's very difficult to beat this hook. It's 50 hooks in a pack. It's eight bucks. Deddy has them. I'll link in the bottom uh, in the description there. Really, um, this they got all different sizes. It's great. And that, that code actually still still is going on. There's not many of the flies left, but if, if you don't know what I mean, um, John Bonacera and I we gave Deddy a whole bunch of flies. If you place an order and use the code Catskills. You're gonna get two flies, one from him, one from me. You'll get it in the actual order. Um, and um, classic flies. And it's just a way for us to help out the, the fly shop. So if you're looking at this video in a month, it's gonna be over. It's probably gonna be over in, they'll probably be out of them in, in, but definitely before the end of next week, there's not gonna be any left. There's not many left. I see maybe, maybe only has 15 boxes and we gave him 50. So a lot of people been ordering, which I appreciate. Thread. Giorgio Benici, this is light done. Uh, this is 12-0. I'll link to all this stuff that Deddy sells, which is pretty much all, all these things. Because that's usually where I buy all my new material. Now, CDC feathers. When you buy a box of CDC feathers, um, usually you get like those small, tiny puff ones that are kind of useless. You get these medium ones. Uh, this happens to be a pretty good medium one. Sometimes it's one of these garbagey medium ones, but all you do is you pile these on top of each other and you tie them in. It's just you know, you pull the feathers forward, and maybe it takes five, six of them or something to make to make two wings. But then also you get these big ones right here. See that? And compared to a medium one, you can see the de difference in length um, right here. See that? It's a big difference. But it, it doesn't mean these fibers are any good because when you bring all this stuff up, you can see, look at that right there, it stops right there. So in reality, all you're getting is what? All you're getting is mm, maybe, this one happens to be really good, you're getting two thirds of the feathers, but you're not getting the whole thing. This one right here, this one's not so good. See that? You're getting maybe half. I always feel bad about wasting all this stuff. If you watch one of the Davy McFarlane videos, uh, he takes whatever's left and makes it into dubbing. That's a good idea. I do something different. So um, I told you, two two feathers is all you need to make those those wings right there. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you do it now. Normally, when somebody you got, I got two here. This is two white, large, right? Not the extra select. This is important. The extra select ones, when you get like Petajan or maybe even Trout Hunter, sell some really good ones. These fibers down here are super long, and you'll get them into the tip, right? But you know, you might pay twice as much for those feathers. Um, but you can make one of those. The quality of at the end result, if you do this. All I have is two here. That's it. Two. Sometimes you need. Brain uses five feathers, but. This is just two. Normally everybody brings them up. Well, what I do is I do the exact opposite. I take all these tips, the tips are lined up, I hold the tips, and I bring all this stuff back. See this? Mm 
All right, so now I got two tips right there, and then all this stuff is back. And then I tie this in. pull it into the right length. I think that's good. And I wrap back some good turns, but not too many. I cut it off. And then I come back here. And I don't let go of these. See this? I, I reach in here with, with the scissors and I cut these tips. Just like that. Now I have this, right? Well, I grab back here bring these forward I leave this bring these forward and now I'm left with this V right here see that V well I just tie that V in and I wrap back really tight until it's one turn after where I cut the last one in. So this, it kind of creates a little bit of a taper. Now, I got this. Well, I come back in here. All these are cutoffs. Now, you can still use these, but maybe I'll use some of them. i cut this off right here. Right, and then I take all these fibers, bring them forward. The stem is 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 back here. It's uh, it basically it's in it's in between my two fingers. You don't want to tie that stem in. Go go back up. Sometimes it's good to do some looping turns like that to avoid bulk. two turns, pull it in, nice tight ones back until you feel your thread just hit the, hit the, hit the shank, there it is, and then we come in here, we tie that, cut that off right there. So now, what we did here was, um, also by the way, this is all that's left, there's nothing left of these, these two. We, we tied in the first batch and we cut it somewhere around here. And then we tied in the second batch and we cut it just past where we cut the other one. And then we tied the third and we cut it just. So it creates a little bit of a taper. Just a little bit of a taper. And now I'll do a couple loose turns up. I'm not trying to create bulk. And I'm going to bring all these forward and then just some of the the long ones I'll tear off just to see what I got. But you can see that's that's pretty full right there. And now we will we can we can split it now or we can split it later. Um, I, I like to just split it now just to make sure everything's all right. We're splitting it with thread and then later on we split it with dubbing or we kind of we, we neaten it up with dubbing. So all I'm doing is just doing two figure eights. Now, one thing I'll say about having this many fibers, it can be difficult to remember uh, to, to to figure out where the middle is. It gets a little it takes a little bit of getting used to. You see I just did it in 2 seconds. You do like half a dozen of these things and and y y you'll be able to figure it out fairly easily. But look look how full these wings are with only with only two two CDC feathers. And let's bring this back again with some looping turns. And I'm just gonna hit this with my nail a little bit. I'm just trying to create a taper. There we go. And then we go right back to the bend. And we're gonna put the tail in. The tail is just this whiting, um, tailing pack feather. These things are amazing. I mean, you get these things, this, you can see the price there, 15 bucks. There's, you'll never need to buy more tails in this color ever again. It's, um, there's like 500 feathers in here. It's, it's, and these things are so freaking long 
they're like, it's like a heron feather. Look at this. All that is good. So it's, these are, these are awesome. And if you don't lose it like I just did, okay, there we go. The, the, it really will last you forever. Now I put in a, a bunch of these. I put in a bunch. So. Yeah, I don't know what that happens to be. That could be 10. I, I just, I put one turn in and hold it just to look at the length and if I like it I go up. And we'll clip this off here. And then I go back and you can go under that that like splays them splays them out. But then I also will just go and just put my thread turn basically through the middle. I just eyeball it. I don't get crazy with like counting them out because there's a lot in here. But that keeps them that keeps them separated pretty good. Yeah, that's all right. We got one sort of rogue one here. That I'll just clip off. That's good. Dubbing. A couple different ones you can use. This is like a dry fly dubbing, and this works. Um, this is this is an Adams gray, so it's like a blue dun type of color. You can see right there, and or you could just use like a regular hair's ear, right? This happens to be a dark one. This says dark hair's mask. Um, I don't think it matters. Just it just wants it, you just want it to be gray. That's always good. And I don't like to put too much on at a time. It, it's more work doing it like this, going back to, to the thing, but I like to just go a little bit because this dry fly dubbing, this Adams Gray stuff is, is um, I mean, a little goes a long way. So we're just gonna make sure that we create this taper nice. good thing about using this color thread is is that even if you don't catch the back just perfect it still looks good so there we go now I'll go back to this dubbing I only put on a little bit and it basically it took me all the way up to the wing now on a little bit more and now we're going to do another figure eight just to try and clean everything up I got two and then two make sure you keep this stuff tight and then sometimes it's a good idea to put one in the back and then go forward And you can put some head cement on the thread, whatever you want to do. I rarely do that with the fishing flies anymore. Now, let's just take a look at this. It's a couple of a couple of fibers going in different directions. You can see that is that's full. Now what I do here is is that I take it out and first I look at it and I just see this one, the length of this one looks alright, but there's some stragglers. So what I do is I pull all these in and I and I see that I just kind of mark it where I want it to end and I come in here 
and I just tear off the bulk of it with my nail. Um, I just like pinch it off. And then if there's like a few left, I can, I'll cut those. But whatever you do, don't try and cut the whole thing because it's going to look bad. You're better off pinching basically 95% of it. It, it just looks better, pinched. So I'll put this back right in here. <laughs> These feathers right here I took from that this that Orvis box I was telling you about, three grams. I think I paid this was a long time ago before C D C um was so prominent now, uh before it was, you know what I mean, so widely used. But I mean it cost me ten bucks for a box of three gram and I I still the only thing that's left is this, these these huge ones, which I've saved. And I didn't come up with this method until very recently, so I've been trying to figure out what to do with these super long feathers, and I guess I figured it out. <laughs> and you can do it with the short feathers, too. See how I did three stages? If you take a medium like this, you can get two stages in, which is really good. Now, you won't be able to get these wings out of two of these feathers. You'd probably need... Um, three or four probably but um, you'd need eight to just if you did them like this you know if you just pulled them all together and layer them I'm all up on top of each other so this method is really uh, this is good and it's gonna I mean a box will last you forever it does now let me tell you something I'm gonna give you a tip when you get one of these boxes I open them up and I go through everything and I separate it right if you're gonna do that do not do that at your tying desk you got to go to the, you put two leaves in your dining room table, <laughs> I'm telling you if you got one, <laughs> because this thing will cover your entire dining room table, that's how much, st I mean, three grams of this stuff that's basically barely floats to the ground, I mean, look at that, okay, it's, there's a lot of feathers in three grams, so, um, don't do it when you got a cold, when you're just coughing and sneezing, because feathers will go everywhere. Put it on, wear a mask. I bet you got a couple of those right now, right? And open it up on a dining room table, uh, or if you have like a big island countertop or something, or the floor maybe even, uh, if you have like a wood floor. Um, open it up there, or else it's it'll be a disaster if you try and do it in your dining room. So that's my tips on it. Um, so this is like a blue quill spinner rusty spinner in a in a blue quill version i just call it a dusty spinner it's not really a new fly or anything it's just you know it's just how what i refer to it as um but um it's uh this method right here is the key to what to, to why i did this fly it's, a, it's 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 great i would i would i would give it a shot i bet you you're gonna like it all right thanks